So today we are going to see about introduction to crop physiology. So crop physiology is concerned with the processes and functions of the crops at cellular, subcellular and whole plant levels in response to environmental variables and its growth. So or in short we can say that physiology is the study of functional aspects of crop plants. So this is the study in which the plant physiological processes are integrated to cause whole plant responses in community or how a plant will respond inside a population is determined solely by physiological aspects. So what are the importance of physiology in agriculture? We all know that physiology is an integral and inseparable part of agriculture. In case of growth and development, unlike animals, Plants are solely dependent on cell division and cell enlargement, which again highlights the importance of physiology in plants. We all know that the plants establish their own stand within the soil and colonize the land. So this is enabled by the evolution of the secondary cell wall, which is lignified. So this evolution of secondary cell wall, which provided the necessary structural integrity to the plants, to grow vertically against the gravitational pull. Similarly, the presence of cell wall in plants uh, plays an important role which acts as an exoskeleton and allows it to maintain a high turgor pressure. So the cell wall is absent in, term, uh, in case of animals. So these are the most general aspects of physiology. So but in view of agriculture, physiology plays critical role in many of the stages so i would like to list out some so the physiological importance are most prevalent in seed germination seedling growth crop establishment and development flowering fruit and seed setting crop maturity stage and even at the harvest stage but the importance of physiology does not stop at the harvest stage itself it continues even up to the post harvest stage so the post harvest stage how the importance of physiology still remains in the post harvest stage means uh, regarding the storage capacity or the increased shelf life of a of the harvest produce so such is the long list of points where the physiology is very much important in agriculture so we are going to see the importance of water and we all know that that the water is an universal solvent and is readily transported through the body of the plant and it can almost dissolve any type of solutes that's why it is called an universal solvent and also it is very much correct and apt to say that water as the liquid of life so importance of water to plants so water is a fundamental element for every living organism. So water typically constitutes 80 to 95 percentage of the mass of growing plant tissues. And again, water is the main constituent of protoplasm, comprising up to 90 to 95 percent of its total weight. And in the absence of water, protoplasm becomes inactive and is even killed. So different organic constituents of plants such as carbohydrates, proteins, nucleic acid and enzymes etc. lose their physical and chemical properties in the absence of water. Water participates directly in many metabolic processes. So uh, one such example is the interconversion of carbohydrates and organic acids which, which is dependent on, on the processes such as hydrolysis and condensation reactions. So water increases the rate of respiration and also seeds respire fast in the presence of water. And water is the source of hydrogen atom for the reduction of CO2 in the reaction of photosynthesis. So as discussed earlier, water acts as a solvent and also as a carrier for many substances. It forms a medium in which several reactions take place and water present in the vacuoles help in maintaining the turbidity of the cell which is a must for proper activities of life and to maintain its form and structure. 
Water helps in translocation of solutes and in tropical plants, water plays a very important role in thermal regulation against high temperature. So, uh, how it uh, maintains the thermal regulation means in terms of uh, cutation or in terms of transpiration process. And again, the elongation phase of cell growth is totally dependent on the absorption of water. Why water the liquid of life is rated so high? It is because of these properties listed here. So it acts as a solvent for electrolytes and non-electrolytes. Electrolytes are substances that produce electrically conducting solution when dissolved in water. And water has a high specific heat. So which is the highest among all other liquids. So specific heat refers to the energy required to raise the temperature of 1 gram of water by 1 degree Celsius. For water, around 4.18 joules of energy is required to raise the temperature by 1 degree Celsius. Again, it has a very high latent heat of vaporization, which means the heat that has to be given to a unit mass of material to convert it from the liquid to vapor phase or one phase to another. So water has a high latent heat of vaporization. And the fourth point will be the cohesive and adhesive properties. So this refers to the interactive forces acting between two molecules. In terms of cohesion, it refers to the uh, interaction between two similar molecules. In case of water, between two H2O molecules. And in case of uh, adhesive properties, it is it deals with the interaction between one H2O molecule with any other molecules. A water possesses a high surface tension, so which is the tendency of liquid surfaces to shrink into the minimum surface area possible. Also, it has a very high tensile strength, which is the maximum stress that a material can withstand while given an extra. Again, water has the property to stabilize the temperature and it is also transparent to the visible radiation. As a liquid, water is water has a low viscosity. Viscosity is a measure of a fluid's resistance to flow. So how water helps plants? So for every gram of organic matter made by the plant, approximately 500 gram of water is absorbed by the roots, transported through the plant body and lost to the atmosphere. So even slight imbalances in the flow of water can cause water deficits and severe malfunctioning on many cellular processes. Thus, every plant must delicately balance its uptake and loss of water. For transportation of materials or the movement of materials in and out of the cells, uh, three physical processes are said to be involved, namely diffusion, osmosis and imbibition. Diffusion is the movement of particles or molecules from a region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration. The rate of diffusion of gases is faster than the liquids or solutes. The diffusion particles have a certain pressure called as diffusion pressure which is directly proportional to the number of concentration of the diffusing particles or the solutes involved in the diffusion process. Diffusion takes place always from a region of higher diffusion pressure to a region of lower diffusion pressure or it occurs along a diffusion pressure gradient. So when does the rate of diffusion increases? So the rate of diffusion increases when the diffusion pressure gradient is steeper which means that there is a wider gap between the higher diffusion pressure area and the lower diffusion pressure areas. The second one would be when the temperature is increased and when the diff uh, diff uh, density of the different particles are much more less the rate of diffusion increases. Again, the medium through which diffusion occurs is less concentrated. If the medium through which the diffusion process is taking place is of a lesser concentration, then the rate of diffusion increases. So diffusion 
plays an important role in the life of plants. So it is an essential step in the exchange of gases during respiration and photosynthesis. During passive salt uptake, the ions are absorbed by diffusion. It is important in stomatal transpiration where diffusion of water vapor from the interrelation space into the outer atmosphere occurs through open stomata. So now coming to osmosis, it is also a type of diffusion where the diffusion of solvent molecules occurs into the solution through a semi-permeable membrane. So when the diffusion of solvent molecules occurs through a semi-permeable membrane, we refer it to as osmosis. Here, if here if two solutions of different concentrations are separated by a semi-permeable membrane, then the diffusion of solvent will take place from the less concentrated suitable into the more concentrated solution till both the solutions attain equal concentration or reach a equilibrium. So in osmosis, so you know, two solutions are separated by a semi-permeable membrane. Hence, a pressure is developed in solution caused by the dissolved solutes in it which is called as osmotic pressure. So an osmotic pressure is measured in terms of atmospheres and is directly proportional to the concentration of dissolved solutes in the solution. So as the concentration of dissolved solutes in a solution increases, the osmotic potential increases. And the osmotic potential or the osmotic pressure of a solution will be always higher than its pure solvent. Now, according to the solution involved in an osmosis process, we can divide this osmosis into two types, namely endosmosis and exosmosis. In endosmosis, a living plant cell is placed in water or in a hypotonic solution whose Osmotic potential or osmotic pressure is lower than the cell sap. So, when the osmotic potential of a hypoton or a, of a solution is said to be less than the of cell sap, it is known as hypotonic solution. So, water enters into the cell sap by osmosis, and the process is called endosmosis. So, as a result of entry of water into the cell sap a pressure is developed which press the protoplasm against the cell wall and become turbid or become bulged this pressure is called a turgor pressure so consequence of the turgor pressure is the wall pressure which is exerted by the elastic cell wall against the expanding protoplasm in case of exosmosis the plant cell is placed in a hypotonic solution whose osmotic pressure is higher than that of the cell sap. Then the water comes out of the cell sap into the outer solution and the cells become flaccid or become shriveled. So this process is called as exosmosis. But when the cell or tissue is kept in an isotonic solution, the cell will remain as such. The cell remains as such because the osmotic potential in the solution or the osmotic pressure present in the solution or in the cell sap has reached a equilibrium. So here you can see when the cell is placed in a hypertonic solution, the water enters into the cell to make, uh, to make it target. When kept in a hypertonic solution, the cell become shriveled as the, H2, the water molecules has gone out of the cell sap. In case of isotonic solution, as uh, the both the uh, osmotic pressure difference has reached an equilibrium, uh, there is no difference in the cell. So regarding the significance of osmosis in plants, large quantities of water are absorbed by roots from the soil by osmosis. Cell to cell movement of water and dissolving of other substance involved osmosis even in opening and closing of stomata is dependent upon the turgor pressure of guard cells so due to osmosis the turgidity of the cells and the shape or form of the organs are maintained 
even the resistance of plants to drought and frost increases with an increase in the osmotic pressure. So turbidity of the cells of the young seedling allows them to come out of the soil. So the third one would be your imbibition. So certain substances if placed in a particular liquid absorb it and swell up. Uh, it's similar to like a sponge in water. So for example, when some pieces of grass or dry wood or dry seeds are placed in water, they absorb the water quickly and swell up considerably so that their volume is increased. These substances are called as imbibants and the phenomena as imbibition. Certain force of attraction is existing between imbibants and the involved substance. In plants, the hydrophilic colloids with protein and carbohydrates such as starch, cellulose and peptic substance have strong altercation towards water. So hydrophilic, the term means water loving substances. Like diffusion and osmosis, imbibition also plays a very important role in the life of plants. The first step in the absorption of water by the roots of higher plant is the imbibition of water by the cell walls of root hairs. So in this picture, you can see the cross section of the root of barnyard millet. So you can see these hair like projections. These are the root hairs. So the water is absorbed by the cell walls of these root hairs. So again, this uh, imbibition is very much important in case of seed germination. The dry seeds require water by imbibition for germination. Now, coming to plasmolysis. When a plant cell or tissue is placed in a hypertonic solution, water comes out from the cell sap into the outer solution through exosmosis. And the protoplasm begins to shrink or contract. The protoplasm separated from the cell wall assures or assumes a spherical form and the phenomena is called as plasmolysis. If a plasmolysed cell or tissue is placed in water, the process of endosmosis takes place. So water enters into the cell sap and the cells become turgid or bulged and the protoplasm again assumes its normal shape and position. So this phenomena is called as plasmolysis. So this is how a plasmolyzed plant cell looks like when kept in a hypertonic solution exosmosis occurs and this uh, yellow demarcated place is your protoplasm which will shrink and assume a spherical form in the center of the cell. So when it is kept back into a isotonic solution or in water it will assume the normal size. So now regarding the uh, advantages of plasmolysis, it indicates the semi-permeable nature of the plasma membrane. It is used to determine the osmotic pressure of the cell sap. Plasmolysis is used in salting of meat and fishes. Addition of concentrated sugar solution to jam, jellies, check the growth of fungi and bacteria which become plasmolyzed in a concentrated solution.